I'm like awkwardly holding things. I'm like, Err. uh, today we are reviewing. Am I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's The Squared Circle by David. I don't know if you can read the name there. David Shoemaker. I have the place. It's going to be loud in here. Maybe it's not super loud, but it's going to be background noise. It's how I feel like going outside. I'm being lazy today. I need to shave later. But look good for the camera, yo. Except I'm all sweaty. Summer Texas, god damn it. Alright, look, I thought I would share some of these funny, uh, little, uh, for, uh, I'll start, because usually I don't start with the, uh, I think I did last time start with the text, but, uh, this is talking about P.S. Hayes being, like, uh, racist. Uh, where is it? Conservative? Well, John, alright, here it is. Michael P.S. Hayes. Ringleader of the fabulous Freebirds, often resorted to race baiting to intensify feuds. The Freebirds feud with Junkyard Dog turned on Hayes calling J.Y.D. Boy! Uh, now I think of fucking uh, the guy from the tall guy from Phantasm, boy. Road Warriors at Comiskey Park with a oh shit I skipped a page. Came the ring, blah blah blah. Spend it. Oh wait, oh we turn. I'm more of a nigger. <laughs> you are. Wow, well, that's hardcore dude. He was said to have used the N word casually over the years, without causing a stir. He is also credited with the notion that black wrestlers don't need gimmicks because being black is their gimmick. Well, swell fella. Alright, I think this is like Ric Flair talking about uh, Randy Macho Man Savage being paranoid. He's like, or to put it another way, the paranoia that made him so affecting in the ring was exactly what kept him from being relatable beyond the ropes. Hoff's, oh, okay, he goes to Hofstetter. I think he's a journalist or something. Famous piece ends aptly. We are all sufferers from history, but the paranoid is a double sufferer since he is afflicted not only by the real world, with the rest of us, but by his fantasies as well. All right, and another. Oh shit! I'm going too far. Oh yeah, see, I got this. Well, I'll go to that later. But uh, that's where I am right now on page 200. I got the. I think the Paul Heyman card, unless it came with the last book. It, it was in this card when I ordered it from Amazon. All right. So anyway, oh, uh, where's page 196? God damn it! It talks about fucking <laughs> Vince Russo booking, which is always fun. Oh my god. I need to read that book, though, Who Killed WCW. Oh yeah, that Jamie Kellner died recently, too. Uh, right as that was being angry. It's interesting. Is this it? Oh yeah, so let's talk about Miss Elizabeth booking. It says, The inanity of WCW's book in during that period can be perfectly summed up by this Wikipedia synopsis. <coughs> you gotta clear that globus. Alright, in January 1996, Miss Elizabeth returned to wrestling as a valet for, for Savage. She later turned against Savage and became Ric Flair's valet and the Four Horsemen. She later turned against the Four Horsemen and joined the New World Order, NWO, alongside Savage and Hogan. In June 1998, she parted ways with Savage once again by joining Hogan's side of the NWO, NWO Hollywood. Then she accompanied Eric Bischoff on his way to the ring for the next few months, which is random all over the place. But, this is, uh, but they should talk a lot of uh, uh, WCW. Uh, what the fuck? I think there's more uh, where he shit talks. To. But I, I, I can't blame all of uh, this on Russo. I think a lot. I don't even know if this can. Because Russo joined like what, 99? 2000. Um, so, fuck, what's the other one? It's like on page one. There might have been another uh, where he shits on something WCW did. Oh, yeah, he shits on like. Ah, oh, shit, what was it? Alright, god damn it, I remember, oh, I'm gonna pause, alright, oh shit, damn it, I lost the uh, focus, yeah, that's fitting, alright, uh, from the NWO Wolfpack, uh, oh yeah, he's talking about, uh, I think Savage joining the NWO Wolfpack, and the less that here is probably the better, oh wait, no, is this time, yeah, and it talks about Vince versus that, that's the one I was probably thinking, I guess, um, <laughs> man, I, I, I do like the NWO Wolfpack, though. They have that cool theme song. Wolfpack is back. Close it. All right, I ain't doing that, but it's, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to shit on the Wolfpack. All right. Um, I guess we'll just talk about a little bit of sections of this because they're they're kind of all split off into sections. And I kind of like it. it. In some ways, it reads easier than the Tim Hornbaker. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Tim Hornbaker book. All right, so like this, like... Hackenschmidt, the first he'll turn. Cause so what is like 1906, 1911 was a rematch somewhere on there. Oh shit, this is, oh, this is 1982. But yeah, Hackenschmidt, George Hackenschmidt versus Frank Gotch. 
uh, if that's when the rematch. But the, the first one, I guess, Frank Gosh won. And because he had his famous heel or toe hold. And then, um, you know, Hackenschmidt was the foreigner. And then they talk about, you know, the, the American versus the foreigner. And, and uh, you know, the, I read somewhere that the interview could have been faked back then. Uh, because it's just how journalists were. They just make shit up a lot of times because you couldn't prove them wrong. And uh, he's like, he played dirty even though there he was like, oh, he was cool with the result. And so it ended up setting up a rematch. And then, because his foot was already injured, he just tapped it. He's like, I guess they didn't tap out. Back then, what they do is just, they would just let the submission roll them into the pin. See, it's a territory error, so it's the stuff that Tim Hornbaker covered. But, wait, does that have a gold dust trio? The whole Toots Mont. Oh, alright. Ah, oh, shit. I need to... Yeah, Toots Mont, I realize, he, uh... Was this, this might have been the book I learned it from, where he... He pretty much set modern wrestling on its course, you know? By, uh... The, um... Giving them touring and slams and brawling and shit, you know, and some there's gorgeous George. I actually looked him up a little bit. He like yeah, fucking spray. Uh but then um Brief history. Nepotism oh yeah, the nepotism. Oh, that's Vern Gagne, so that must be Greg Gagne. Greg Gagne. Good guy Greg. Don't be giving Greg some bad name, you son of a bitch. Uh who else is in here? But they talk about the Von, some of the Von Erics got nepotism, some didn't. I mean, you know, because they were actually good. Um, oh, is that the fucking Sportatorium? Or, this, yes, there's some of, these are some of the famous courts they talk about. Venues. Oh, yeah, Terry Gordy. He was good up until he got brain damage, I guess, doing those drugs. Bruiser Brody, who died in 89, and Puerto Rico. And so, you can see, uh, uh, Cindy Lauper, the rock and wrestling heirs, and... So you can see a lot of this. Uh, I'm gonna pause this real quick. So check it out. I started taking digital notes again. You know, I gotta double it up here. I hate how the modern, uh, I don't know, Windows does it, but at least you press the other X. See, uh, Frank Gosh, Reed Russell, furniture salesman, in quotes. It's turning out to be Dan McLeod. Dan McLeod, whatever his name. Iowa, Farmer Burns, oh yeah, I was learning all about Farmer Burns, how he do like his neck shit, where he just like, hang himself, just work out like that, there's some cool peeps, yeah, there's a lot of cool notes I got here, so these are all the notes, uh, I used to do these, I haven't done these in like a year, or a year. maybe over a year, like two, three years, I haven't done digital notes, so, it's kind of cool to come back to it, because before I was just writing them down. The Gold Dust Trio. See, Toots Mott seems to be the most important member. Set pro wrestling on its modern approach with touring shows, submissions that project out, and brawling. And they also did, I think, entry slams. So. Uh, and it talks about what their, each of the duties of the Gold Dust Trio were. Who's the other guy that was, uh, ran Jack Curley? Yeah, he was, I don't know if he was, like, opposition in the Gold Dust Trio, but... Oh, yeah, I need to read that book, The Fall Guys. Uh, uh, Jim Cornette talks about that. A mass of meat, meat. I just like that quote. New Yorker describing wrestling matches. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and run through this. Uh, June Byers. Oh, and I saw hey, Mildred Burke. I, there's this a podcast I've been listening to, the re uh, Pro Wrestling History. I actually need to update these notes. Um, so, Gene Anderson was the only. Uh, anyway. Um, uh, um, oh, great, now i just go right up my nose, beautiful. Where's the book? So, here's this book. Um, I just, yeah, I'm gonna give it a positive American recommendation. Uh, it's not that I'm just, like, I'm feeling ed about my reviews, I guess, lately. I just, I don't know if I've been just not feeling them or not, but, not that it matters, I guess, but, <laughs> I, I get, maybe if I was reading, I, I might, read um Chuck Palahniuk soon so I have some like fiction so I can actually like uh, talk about the style and stuff I do really like this but I'm enjoying reading about history and uh pro wrestling history and um yeah I, I mean I'd recommend this book um I have some more uh pro wrestling history books I need to get through I don't know exactly how I'm gonna approach them but yeah, I just don't know, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's hard to say how, because a lot of the details just, because I've been reading it like this with, um, uh, Tim Hornbaker, you know, they kind of meld, amalgamate together, so, but I think, uh, fuck, I just don't know what you want to say, 
you know, because I've heard such good things about Tim Hornbaker, about Tim Hornbaker by uh, Jim Cornette. But he's probably re well researched. It might even be more re re researched, better researched than this one, maybe. But this one is just a little bit smoother for me to read, I think. Um, but it's hard to compare them, I mean, you know. So I'm thankful for both of them. Um, but this one might be a little bit less dry. But then again, maybe that means this is missing little subtle little details that you know set a, an elite historian apart from uh someone who just you know just sh shits what most people already know on their page i don't know but my favorite part of the history is learning pre even ter i like learning territorial too you know because then after that you know uh you can hear all about on the fucking net there's stevie richards got his own little youtube i guess he's starting a new one now uh, maven huffman who stole my name you son of a bitch no, uh, there's, uh, there's Booker Hoffman and maybe they both have money. Um, but yeah, you can learn. It's easy to learn about the modern era. So, territorial era is cool, but I really want to learn about, like, you know, the Goldust Trio. And it's kind of interesting learning about, you know, what actually, like, because I was curious how wrestling got on its track of being, like, uh, you know, I don't say faked, but, you know, where, where it's like, pre, there's some pre plan I was like, how did it come from a sport to that? And then you realize uh, that it always came from, like, carnivals and uh, circuses where the, it came from con men who would try to uh, challenge the audience. And then they'd have, like, Farmer Burns or a businessman come up that would look like he was just some occupational guy that couldn't beat up anybody. And then but he was a trained wrestler, you know? So they would just go from, you know... It, it, conning uh people in the audience to just working matches uh, amongst each other you know for money so it was just all about you know making the big bucks it wasn't about you know the pure sport of winning and losing so i thought that was interesting so yeah i i recommend this book the squared circle by david shoemaker